What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG, where I bring you the latest and greatest in Magic content that I can while still trying to have a life. This week, I'd like to bring you something special. My very first commander that I ever built, Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. I was really obsessed with Proliferate when I got into EDH, and this commander really brought me into the scene. So this is how I would build Atraxa in 2022. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine, a faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed, as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter as we ignite your spark and traverse into the magic multiverse. Atraxa Praetor's Voice costs white, blue, black, green for a legendary 4-4 Phyrexian Horror with flying, vigilance, death touch, lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, proliferate. Which means we choose any number of permanents and or players, and then give each of them another counter of each kind that's already there. I prefer an eclectic balance between different types of counters, with about half of the deck focusing on the plus one plus one counters for the creatures, in order to give a big fight on the battlefield, while also having some interestingly powerful control pieces and alternate win cons sprinkled throughout. Our ramp package will consist of an assortment of different types. Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone, and Birds of Paradise will each help us ramp into all of our colors. Farseek, Nature's Lore, and Three Visits will each allow us to search up a typed land into play. Everflowing Chalice, Gyre Sage, and Astral Cornucopia will each help us ramp using permanents with counters on them, allowing Atraxa to boost us ahead into the long game. Midnight Clock and Replicating Ring will each ramp us for 3 mana value, but will also utilize counters so that when we proliferate, the clock will let us wheel our hand, and the ring will make 8 more copies of itself. Bloom Tender and Faberow Elder will each produce 1 mana for each color of permanence we control. If we control our commander, that's 4 total mana. Cryptic Trilobite and Crystalline Crawler will each allow us to store plus 1 plus 1 counters and turn them directly into mana. We can also work some ramp into our land base with Calciform Pools, Dreadship Reef, and Salt Crusted Step, such that our proliferate effects will also store up additional mana for each of these lands that we control that already have counters on them. We can also drop down As Foretold to allow us to free cast once per turn. And finally, we also have Hamza, Guardian of Erishan, to reduce the cost of all our creatures. We also want to keep our hand full, so we will focus on synergistic card acceleration spells. Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishkar's Expertise will serve as well to draw cards equal to the greatest power among our creatures, which will frequently be five or more. Inspiring Call and Armorcraft Judge will each draw us cards for each creature that we control with plus one plus one counters on them. Mindless Automaton will allow us to remove two plus one plus one counters from it to draw a card. Toothy will draw us a bunch of cards when it leaves the battlefield, and will find its partner when it enters. Tezzeret's Gambit will draw us a couple cards and allow us to proliferate. Fathom Mage will draw us a card when a plus one plus one counter is placed on it. The Great Hinge is amazing in this deck, as it does everything that we want to do. Ramp, draw, plus one plus one counters, it's worth it. Just get a proxy when it makes sense to do so. We can even utilize Tamiyo Field Researcher to assist us in drawing a couple of extra cards each turn. Our control section will look to fit directly into our proliferation strategy. We can also use a few more Planeswalkers for control here, since we have a convenient strategy for keeping them alive. Oko, Thief of Crowns, is ridiculous in allowing us to repeatedly elk our opponent's commanders, while Kea the Inexorable will let us exile non-land permanents, while also allowing us to keep our permanents returning to our hand instead of leaving play. We can even use Ajani Steadfast and Ajani Greathearted in tandem to 
give each of our walkers and our creatures two counters per turn, while our proliferation keeps them from actually losing any loyalty in this process. Conclave Mentor, Winding Constrictor, and Corpse Jack Menace will each allow us to increase the amount of counters gained for our plus one plus one counter effects. Pure Imaginative Rascal and Vorinclex Monstrous Raider will do the same, but also will increase the amount of any other counters placed. Lux Cannon, Swords to Plowshares, Hopeful Initiate, and D-Spark will make up the rest of our single target removal suite. We will also have a couple of board wipes with Tox Rill the Corrosive and Contagion Engine. Each of these will spread counters across the board that we can proliferate to kill all of the opposing forces. For protection, we will use Lightning Greaves, Swift Foot Boots, Plax Caster Frogling, and Shalai Voice of Plenty, since our commander is such a kill on sight target. We will also include some utility lands, Nesting Grounds to move around counters, Lanawar Reborn to help us spread the 1-1 one, one counter fever, and Bailaged Recovery slash Sanctuary to give us the option to return a card to our hand from the grave. Finally, we will want to close out the game. We want to up our proliferate game as this can often be our win con in and of itself. Thrumming Bird, Grateful Apparition, Spark Double, and Strionic Resonator will each help us to add more proliferation to our board. Also, the Contagion Engine will let us proliferate twice on an activated ability. Luminarch Aspirant, Loyal Guardian, and Felidar Retreat will each help us to spread 1-1 one -one counters on all of our creatures. Of course, Shalai and the Ajanis do as well, but we already mentioned them. Managorja Hydra and Forgotten Ancient will each get larger as spells are cast, and the Ancient will even let us move these counters around at our upkeep. We will also throw in some Infect with Icker Rats and Viral Drake. The Drake is going to also let us proliferate for as many times as we can use for mana, and the Rats immediately gives a player a poison counter upon entering the battlefield. So we don't have to do combat damage to everyone. This rat just does that for us. Deep Glow Skate and Colonian Hydro will each double the counters on all of our creatures, and the Skate will even double our other permanents also. The rest of our lands will fix our colors. Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Breeding Pools, Godless Shrine, Golgari Rot Farm, Hallowed Fountain, Indatha Triome, Overgrown Tomb, Selesnia Sanctuary, Simic Growth Chamber, Temple Garden, Watery Grave, and Zagoth Triome, leaving us room for nine forests, four islands, three plains, and one swamp. That about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on Archideck.com in the description, complete with a maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you would take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting! If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.